So I know, and those of you who watch a lot of my videos know that I've been very critical of Mortal Kombat 11, like very critical of it. I think the game is kind of trash, but it's never, I never say that from a place of hate, right? Like I love Mortal Kombat, I love the franchise, I love fighting games, and it's always said in the sense of, hey, I want this to be better, or this should be better. So I don't want this video to be taken as another video bashing Mortal Kombat 11. It's just another way of me, a different way of me showing, hey, here's where I get some of this stuff from, right? Because I've said a lot of things like this game is a step down, it's a step backwards. What do you guys do? doing like did you just fire everybody who knew how to make fighting games like why does nobody in your studio know how to make fighting games etc right i've said a lot of that kind of stuff and this video is more just about the direct things that i'm talking about and um i still anticipate an injustice announcement in the somewhat near future so i did want to talk about some injustice that and the fact that i haven't played so much mortal kombat in the, in the near in the recent past i don't know how to say that but yeah i took a little bit of a break from mortal kombat sorry that the content's like but i'm here so yo it's jsf this is why injustice 2 is a better fighting game than mortal kombat 11 so <clears throat> i want to start i want to start with like the simple things the not only the aesthetic things but the things that aren't gameplay we'll get to the gameplay there's a lot of shit in the gameplay and i'm probably gonna forget some things but it's fucked um, the first thing I want to say is roster size. And if you just look at Mortal Kombat 11's roster size, sure, now after all the DLC, it's, it's the roster has grown, right? What is it? Seven, or 73. 37 characters now that the roster has got all this DLC, ultimate, all this kind of stuff. It's great, right? Wonderful. We love it. But the game launched with 24 characters, 25 if you count Shao Kahn, the pre-order bonus. Now, while that can be seen as okay, like MKX launched with about the same roster, but Injustice 2 launched with 28 characters. So, off rip, when the game released, it already had more in it. It had more content in it, right? <clears throat> That's just the truth. And when MK11 released, it had issues, right? It had less characters. It did have glitches. It did have bugs. There was an emergency patch released. I don't know if you guys remember it, but they did an emergency combat cast and an emergency patch within the first week or two of the game being out. That was a thing. But my big thing here is characters, right? Say what you will about fighting games. Fighting games are very reliant on characters. Like, the characters make the game. The characters are the most important thing in a fighting game. That's just how it is. That's never going to change, right? So having less characters means less variety, less choices. So, you know, there's that. Um, the other thing that I think was really good um, is that, well, I'll just get to this too. We The gear system in Injustice 2 is better. Yes, it was more complicated. We had like the loot boxes that we should have never had. But the gear system was better. And the thing that was really cool about Injustice is there wasn't no, I mean, I like that there's a rank the league in Mortal Kombat. I just think they did it wrong, right? Um, but online in Injustice 2, if you just play matches, no matter what mode, you get gear. So it isn't like, oh, get to this rank in combat league to unlock this costume. No, just literally play online and you'll unlock gear. Literally play any matches, you'll unlock gear. Like, you don't need to... It wasn't tied to a specific mode. Like, hey, you have to get to this rank in this mode to get this specific gear or this specific uh, costume piece, right? It was more like, it was more just play the game and you'll unlock shit. The more you play it, the more shit you'll unlock, right? And I think that's cool because that encourages people to play in a different way. <clears throat> it isn't trying to force people to play ranked and try to force people to only want to win in ranked because then you end up with some of the toxic combat league shit that we have to deal with now. Um, but another thing about the characters that I wanted to say, I did want to talk about gear because this ties into gear. Um, the character choices and premier skins. Now, I have a lot to say about premier skins. That's kind of going to be a video in itself, and it's not just about premier skins, but it kind of is. It'll make sense when, when you see the video. But um, the choices that they made in the Injustice 2 roster were really, really good. Um, there are some characters where I'm like, yeah, yeah but... They usually fulfill an archetype. Like, a lot of people like Bane, right? I think Bane's a cool character, but I think there are much cooler characters in DC Comics history. I think Batman has much more interesting villains. He's a great villain, but I think he, they have more interesting ones in terms of abilities. But I understand because we have a true grappler in the game now, right? And like the video I just made um, recently, right? It's important to have those archetypes. Like, Bane's a grappler. Bane doesn't have a fireball. Bane doesn't have a teleport. Bane cannot roll into a ball and fly at you. He is 
a grab you man. Now when he Venoms up, yes, he can get really fast and dash up. And he has armor, but armor is a trope with grapplers. Zangief has armor in some fighting games. Like it's so I like the choices they made. I think they made some great choices. I think Atrocitus was a great new addition. I think um you know, uh, even the characters that came back from Injustice 1 were really well, right? Dr. Fate was, I mean, he was his owner, but he was a good addition, right? <laughs> so I think they added some really cool characters. Brainiac was a great villain. Um, so the choices that they made in roster were great, and I think they were better than uh, Mortal Kombat 11. And Mortal Kombat 11's roster is not bad, right? I'm not saying the base roster is bad, but it isn't, <clears throat> how do I put this? It isn't that many new characters, right? And it doesn't have to be. MKX had too many new characters. MK11 doesn't have many new characters, but the new characters that it did introduce are not universally loved. I think Gears is a really cool character, but he was super overpowered on day one, so that made him hated, right? We got Collector, who... I like Collector's playstyle, but aesthetically, he is not interesting to me at all. His name is lame. Like, his design looks stupid to me. Like, he's not a character that fans rush to that became a fan favorite. You know what I mean? Cetrion is, like, take it or leave it. She's okay. So, there is no, like, <clears throat> out of all the new characters, there are none that are universally loved. And, like, the characters that they brought back from MKX that were new, they're also not universally loved, right? Like, Devora, some people love her, but a lot of people hate her. Like, Jackie, nobody cared about Jackie in MKX, right? And, and granted, Jackie looks better in uh, MK11, and her design is a little bit better. Her moveset and stuff is a little bit better, a little bit more fleshed out. But um, she's also been really broken for a long time, so that made a lot of people hate her. So the roster in MK11 isn't, like, amazing. It's not bad. Right? Nobody, I don't think anybody will say, hey, the MK11 roster sucks. Especially after the DLC. Like, no, the roster's not bad. But it could have been, it's not as good as, like, the MK9 roster. And I think the Injustice 2 roster is better than the Injustice 1 roster. Right? So, like, it got better with it. And that roster's really good. Like, the roster, like, adding Blue Beetle, adding Red Hood, adding Starfire. Whether you like the characters' playstyles or not, just us seeing those characters in those moments, adding the Ninja Turtles... And I got a lot to say about the Ninja Turtles. Um, but adding those characters made us really hype. We were like, wow, these characters are sick. Wait, how are we going to use all four of them? Wait, the Atom can shrink? Like, it was really, really cool. But I've been talking for too long already, so let's get to gameplay. This is the meat and potatoes of the video. So I'm sorry this video is too long. But um, there's a lot with gameplay that I want to say why, um, why Injustice 2 is just a better fighting game than um, uh, Mortal Kombat 11. So first of all, it has anti-airs. I don't think we need to go very far or ask very many people to realize this game doesn't have anti-airs. There are a couple of moves that are really good at anti-airing, but in Injustice 2, there's universal anti-airing. Even if you play a character like Green Lantern, who I played, who's down 2, which is everybody's anti-air, is kind of trash. Um, he has Lift, and Lift can anti-air as well. Now, they nerfed Lift, so his anti-air isn't that good, but the character sucks anyway. It's not a big deal. Most characters have a down 2 that's a great anti-air. Great anti-air. And in Justice 1, for those of you who don't know, probably most of you, they literally, like, uh, in a certain patch, right, they buffed anti-airs to the point that it was like, okay, now everybody can anti-air. And there are characters like Batman who have, like, a 6-frame down 2. Everybody doesn't have that, but having, like, an 8- or 9-frame down 2 is not, like, it's not uncommon, right? So it's like, you can reliably anti-air people now they're air dashing and shit like that um which makes it a little more you know eh, wishy-washy but then the jump buttons are more active in that game right so it isn't like jumping is gonna win you the game in injustice that's just not how the game works right whereas in this game wake up jump is a very viable strat you know just jumping in general and not ever blocking is a very viable strat and in injustice that's just not how it works um, another thing that I don't want to talk too much about, but it has push blocking. If you don't know what push blocking is, it's basically, um, it's in, it's funny, all NetherRealm games, oh, well, I can't speak for MK9, but Injustice 1, MKX, and Injustice 2 all have push blocks. They might call it a block breaker or something, but it's a push block. Um, just like Marvel vs. Capcom 3 calls it an advancing guard, it's a push block. It, basically, when you attack somebody and they're blocking, they spend a resource, well, some games it doesn't cost meter, but in NRS games it costs like a bar of meter, to push you away from them. So now they can breathe again. Can you imagine this game with a push block? Liu Kang is trying to forward forward back one meter death and I just spend a bar defensive meter and push him away. 
I'm down with that. I think that would help this game a lot. I almost made a whole video about that, but I only will if y'all want to hear it. Um, another thing is combos. The game has combos. <laughs> um, this game, yes, Mortal Kombat has combos, Mortal Kombat 11, but combos, as we all know, are you know definitely cut short. If you look at before, now with customs, it got better. It did get better. I don't want to just be dishonest. It did get better with customs, but overall, most characters don't really have like really cool, interesting combos. And in Justice, everybody has combos. And I mean, with the wall bounce, ground bounce mechanics in the game, like every character can at least back three, jump in into something, into probably a setup, or into a combo, or into good Oki, right? It's just something that doesn't exist in this game. Some characters can get Oki, some characters can't. Some characters can meaty, some characters can't, right? And that just wasn't really how it was in Injustice. Because, and that's another thing, universal armor. Um, there's invincibility in Injustice, of course, like with wake-ups and back dashes and stuff like that. But armor is still armor, right? Having a hit armor is still really good. Like if you have shitty buttons or somebody's mashing on you, in Injustice, you can literally spend a bar of meter and just armor through it. If I know you're going to mash, and I'm, let's say I'm playing Green Lantern, um, you know, you come up to me or you do something negative, uh, but not, uh, but not uh, punishable, right? I know you're going to mash after. I can just meter burn 4-3. Granted, it's hard because it's forward and you block backwards. I understand, but just bear with me for a second. In meter burn 4-3, you armor through that first hit and you punish them for it, right? It makes people have to think about mashing, right? And it's not that's not always the situation, but there are a lot of instances where you can say, yo, I'm going to just use armor. I don't want to deal with this, right? Or you shot a projectile at me, or you did a certain move. I can armor through it. I can meter burn back 3 and forward dash, use the armor to absorb a projectile, then forward dash, like, and go right through it type shit like it had a different like metagame to it because of that it was really really good and it's something that you know hopefully comes back um the breaker system this is another reason it's oh man this is <laughs> this is probably the biggest thing that people hate about mk11 that nobody really complained about in the justice to the breaker system so the clash system is great if you don't know how the clash system works when you're on your second life bar and we haven't got to life bars yet have we Oh man, we got to talk about that. When you hold your second life bar, you get a clash. You only get one. And um, clash is a combo breaker. If you're getting comboed on the ground and the air, whatever you break. And when you break, you get you whatever your meter is, whatever their meter is. You can either spend no meter, they can spend no meter. Cool, then it's just a breaker. If they spend more meter than you, they do damage to you. If you spend more meter than them, you get your life back. So it's a really cool mechanic. And then there's also the air teching. So if you're in a combo, you can tech roll out of a combo. Which is interesting, but you can only up tech and back tech. This is really, really important to note because you can't forward or down tech. And, and in Mortal Kombat 11, Breakaway is just a really fast down tech with no recovery. And in Justice 2, every tech roll up and back, not only did they like fly you backwards or upwards in the air so you're in the air longer, when you get on the ground, and there's no air blocking, when you get on the ground, you have recovery still. You still have landing recovery, so you're never plus. If you air tech out of a combo, you're never plus. Sometimes you can still get punished. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, it, it varies. Like, it became more of a read thing. Like, I'm going to spend two out of my four bars to tech out of this combo, and if you make the read on it, you can might still punish me or pressure me after it, right? Depending on which one I do in the situation. So it was a much better breaker system. It wasn't free in the sense that you would just get out of jail free if you did it. You never got a punish from it. So nobody was ever punishable on hit. You know what I mean? It was just a much better system. But while I talked about life bars briefly, I do want to bring up that in Injustice 2, there are no rounds. Right? In Injustice in general, there's no rounds. And I think this is good. Some people don't like this, but I think it's good. The reason I think it's good is because if I destroy you in round one, I say round one so you know what I mean, but it's not a round. If I take your whole first life bar, flawless, no hits, you didn't hit me at all, guess what? You don't just get a clean slate for round two. Nah, 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 baby girl. You still got to take my whole life bar. So now you got to kill me twice when I already killed you once. It's much harder to come back in that game. Granted, you build a lot more meter when you're getting hit, but that's fine. There's no X Factor. There's no crazy comeback mechanic. It's just you can clash. And you'll, you'll have more meter because you're getting wax, right? And on your second life bar, you can clash. So you have more life. You have more meter, so you can get some life back. But the most you can get is 33% max. 30% is the most you want to practically ever get because that last bar giving you 3% life is not that big of a deal. <laughs> but yeah, just another thing to note. Um. Oh, wow. That was my next point. Um. Meter building. So... I'm not opposed to meter coming back over time. I'm not. 
but it's different when you have to meter build, right? You have to either attack, be hit, or whip special moves. So you have to do something to gain this meter. Something has to happen, right? You can't just sit there and let your meter come back. And that old kind of, that kind of, it, the scorpion thing didn't exist in this game. And what I mean by that is like, you know how you just sit there and duck and wait for him to do a spear? Or like, let's say, let's say you're doing that to him, but you hit him, he broke away from the combo, and now you're waiting for him to spear, and he's like, nah, I'm not moving, I'm gonna wait till my defensive meter, meter comes back. And then he sits there for 20 seconds, and now you have to press him and you get hit by an EX spear, crush and blow. You know what I mean? So that didn't really exist because you had to do something to get meter. <laughs> you have to either whip special moves, you have to be attacking your opponent or getting hit. And that, it also mitigates like taunting and teabagging. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Niggas will teabag you. Don't, don't get it fucked up. <laughs> you will get teabagged. But I'm just saying, if they're going to do that, they're going to have to give up potentially something else. So like you're wasting 10 seconds teabagging, you could have built meter. Or I can build meter while you're doing it. So it discourages that kind of behavior. There is no fatality screen where you're sitting there woozy and they get 30 seconds to taunt you and talk shit. Like it doesn't exist. It's just another thing that makes the game better and leads to a less toxic game, right? Um, and my last point, which really isn't a point, is they had hometown heroes, man. I already made a video about it, so I'm not going to go into it, but it was just a much better way to do online tournaments that led to offline tournaments that led to pro comp. And I think it was so much better. And it's just like, yeah. With this whole video, I didn't want to just shit on MK11. This game sucks, blah, 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 blah. I wanted to show, like, hey, this is why I say it's a step down. If you look at all these things, and there's more things, don't get me wrong, but this video is too long already. Um, there's, It was a step down. Like, the game should have been better. The game should have definitely been better than what it is. It should have been better than the Justice 2. It is not. And I think it's definitive. Like, you cannot... Uh, there's no argument that Breakaway is better than uh, the air teching and clash mechanics in the Justice 2. There's no argument for it. It's object Like, it's objectively worse than the Injustice 2 break mechanics. It just is. But that's just the truth. You know what I mean? So... I don't want people to always think when I say things, it's my opinion. When I say Frost is the worst character in the game, oh, it's just your opinion. No, 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 no. I can objectively prove that. But people don't always like the truth. Shout out to y'all that do, because all I'm here to do is entertain, bring you the truth, bring you content, and try to be better as a content creator. So, yeah, man. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. <laughs> Sorry that I talk so much. I'm long with it, man. I'm, I'm working on it. Um, if y'all enjoyed, please subscribe. Please subscribe. I'm almost at 800 subs. Trying to get to 1,000 at least. You know, catch me on Twitch if you can. I'll see y'all soon. I will stream tonight. Y'all stay safe. JSF, I'm out. Peace.